We finally reached the first football filled weekend of the year. We have a full slate of NFL games on Sunday. We got college football all day tomorrow, but all of that is mere peanuts to Big Sky Friday nights. Week two is here. It's September. Someone tell the Green Day guy to go to sleep and for everyone else sit back, relax and get ready for statewide Montana highlights. Let's get it. Nothing like some good old-fashioned American pride from the student section in our game of the week. Gallatin and Sentinel High School butting heads in a potential playoff preview match. Didn't take long to find action in this one. If you want to get through the Raptors, you got to get through the Dalkey brothers. That's Reese Dalkey putting the team on his back on the opening kickoff. And one play later, Gallatin runs it. Psych, that's a flea flicker. Reese Dalkey sets them up and Carter Dalkey catching the touchdown, putting the Raptors up seven. Nothing. To, don't worry, folks. No sleeper here. Spartans deep in Raptor territory. Go for on fourth. Jace Kashaka playing it cool, dumping it off for the first. That decision pays off in spades. Kashaka hitting Sam Sermon for six. And I say six as the PAT is no good. Raptors up seven to six. Future MSU Bobcat Grant Vegan saying anything you can do, I can do better. This time Ryan Hadel can just backpedal into the end zone. Look out. Pays the price with a big hit on his way in. But Galton leads 14 to 6 regardless. Raptors get the ball inside their five with two minutes to go, but plays like this call him Grant Mahomes with that cross body dart setting up Galton in the red zone. Seconds left on the clock and Vegan caps off a methodical drive hitting Bodie Zapziger in the end zone with less than a second to go. Raptors were anything but extinct tonight taking it 35 to 13. <laughs> Now into the Belgrade Panthers, hosting the Flathead Braves, where both teams are looking to grab their first dub in week two of the early season. Braves start out on offense in the third play of the game. Quarterback Brett Pasola steps back and fires the pigskin into Noah Shugart's hands for the INT. What a snag from the defensive back to help set up his team. Put the field goal up on the board to have the early 3-0 lead. Heading into the second quarter, Flathead has the ball. Pasola gets the ball out quick, and it's linebacker Jacob Hayner with the interception. Hayner gets taken down immediately, but he read the quarterback like a book and fires up the Panthers for their second defensive takeaway of the night. Unfortunately, Belgrade couldn't cash in on the second INT. Now the Braves are desperately looking for any life in their offense, and Pasola throws up a prayer to receiver Will Hollensteiner for the big catch. Hollensteiner goes down inside enemy territory to set up flathead inside the red zone, but the Panthers pounce on the Braves on the one-yard line to come up with a big stop on fourth down, shutting down flathead from getting into the end zone, a huge defensive stand from the Belgrade defense. This game was an exciting defensive battle tonight, but it's it's Belgrade coming away with their first win of the season by a final three to two. Who says defense don't win championships? Well, at least week two games. And we'll head over to French now where the Bronx hosting the Corvallis Blue Devils. Both teams delivered blowout wins last week. Tonight, that would change in a brutal way. Frenchtown came out hot with a fourth down stop, rewarded by the feet of senior quarterback Brody Hardy. That's a silky smooth six, a mere appetizer, because before you know it, he's back at it, off to the races, gliding along for a 14-0 lead. Corvallis doesn't know what to do with him. That's two in the first quarter alone. And on the other side of the ball, Frenchtown's defense brought the boom. Hits like this by, you get it hardy the hammer finally things are looking up for Corvallis driving down the field feet from six and then this a pick six Bailey Corrette taking it all the way up I-90 eat your heart out home crowd Frenchtown put on a show in their first home game of the season taking this one 42 to 0 and when we get back we'll hear from Ethan Becker and Bozeman to see if the Hawks are looking like champions early in the season again but first let's check out some out-of-town scores All right, thanks for sticking with us. Over in Bozeman, two teams with not a lot of love for each other duked it out on the gridiron. NBC Montana's Ethan Becker has been at Van Winkle in Bozeman all night to get the action. Ethan, do the Hawks look like they're a championship caliber team again? 
Alex, what a game by Bozeman as the Hawks early put their foot on the gas and never took it off as this concluded another chapter between Bozeman and Butte in the home stake rivalry. Bozeman won its last four meetings against Butte and started the game with a bang. Evan Hewitt picks off Colton Shea on the first play of the game. That's early momentum for the Hawks, and they capitalize. It's a reverse to Henry Fink as he's in for six, and Bozeman takes control in its home opener. Next drive has a similar result for the Bulldogs. Ball goes whoop on the miss snap. Wyatt Groff recovers the fumble, and the Hawks capitalize again. Brady Casagranda takes it from the Wildcat and falls in to double the Bozeman lead. Hawks keep rolling. Cash Embry hits Luke Zundel, who slips past his tackler for an 18-yard touchdown. Embry had two touchdown passes on the night. Bozeman extends its lead to 21. Butte answers. Shea finds Sam Sampson for a 21-yard connection and a score. That puts Butte on the scoreboard, but the Hawks were too much. Casagrande has his second touchdown of the night out of the Wildcat right before halftime as Bozeman keeps the home stake trophy with a 42-14 victory. After the game, I saw Bozeman head coach Levi Weshi walk past me with the homestake trophy as he gets to keep it in his office for another year. Both Bozeman and Butte are on the road next week with Bozeman at Billing Skyview and Butte on the road at Glacier. That does it for here in Bozeman, live at Van Winkle Stadium. Ethan Becker, NBC Montana Sports. Back to you in Missoula, Alex. All right, thanks, Ethan. How do we keep the hype going? How about... Two high school teams battling on a D1 college football field. Let's go to Washington Grizzly Stadium for more. And again, Washington Grizzly Stadium hosting the Hellgate Knights, fighting for their lives against the Great Falls Bison. Folks, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The Knights did not get a fairy tale ending. The Knights' lackluster defense practically rolled out the red carpet for Jordan Katzenberger, scoring the Bison the second touchdown of the night. Following that, Steele O'Harris putting the Bison back in the pay dirt. Get used to hearing that name. It's not the last time you'll hear it. It's O'Harris's world, and we're all just living in it. Another Another beautiful pass straight into the end zone. Bisons made easy work of the Knights defense, allowing senior Luca Cree to get another score for the team. And Mason Krell managed to power through and roll his way through the defensive line before halftime. Bison had the lead 47 to nothing. Hellgate needs a knight in shining armor to come and save them from games like these. They couldn't manage to get the ball down the field. Bison came out with the 53 to 14 win. Now we go to Silver Bow County, where the Butte Central Maroons look to improve to 2-0, and the Bronx of Hamilton hope to bounce back from a loss to Whitefish. Scoreless opening frame, Peebles floats the lob into the end zone, Carter Korst reads it perfectly for the well-timed INT, but you can't hold the Bronx down for long. Caden Gum on third and short finds the seam on the QB run and gallops for the 25-yard score. Hamilton in the lead at the break, early third, and the Bronx continue their stampede as Braden Lamser takes it 41 yards to the crib. Two-pointer is good, and Hamilton is up 15. But never count a Maroon out. Just ask Ryan Peoples. He finds Aiden Nacello from 10 yards out, and it's a one-score game. Late fourth quarter, Hamilton in possession, but it's strict. Aiden Abraham takes the Maroons to the promised land with the scoop and score. They go for the two and the tie as they pull the Philly special out of their bag of tricks. Tony Steitzer the throw, and Peoples wide open with the reception. In overtime, Maroons put up seven, and the Bronx can't get the TD and go for two and the win. But Central stuffs them. What a play. Maroons win 22 to 21. When we get back, it's time to decide who had the best play on the field from week two of Big Sky Friday nights. But first, let's check some out of town scores. NBC Montana High School Football Play of the Week, sponsored by Republic Services. All right, we've seen a lot of top-tier highlights from some of Montana's best young athletes. And considering it's an election year, the best way to decide which one is the best is to have you at home vote for your favorite. So, let's see the candidates. First play coming from our game of the week. Not every day someone breaks out the flea flicker. Carter Dowkey taking advantage. That, to, that you get into Dowkey connection is lethal, folks. 
Take you to Frenchtown for play number two. Bailey Corrette spends his offseason at the library as he read that fast like a book. One way ticket to the end zone for the pick six. Take you back to Super Bowl 52 for play number three. Who remembers the Philly special? Well, I'm renaming it the Butte Central special. End of the game. Maroons need two. Tony Stites are hitting Ryan Peoples for the winning score. Eagles fans are proud tonight. And if you want to vote for any of those plays tonight, go on our website, NBCMontana.com, to cast your vote. Till then, have a good night, everybody.